Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. We are gonna do an all levels reformer workout. I'm gonna actually use the tower as well. So if you've got a combo unit like this one, this is a V2 Max, a Stop Pilates V2 Max. I'm gonna use both the reformer and the combination vertical frame. So um, if you do not have a vertical frame, you can either just skip forward at that part of our workout, or um, perhaps you can just do some bands and kind of mimic the things that we're doing standing. Okay, so uh, all levels, somewhat restorative, a little bit of challenge because that's my style, right? Um, but uh, I know you're ready for it. So set up your machine, <clears throat> measure your gear bar, your stopper, and your straps, and I'll see you right back here. Okay, welcome back. Let's get started. So we're gonna move the repertoire order around a little bit just to have a little bit of fun today. So um, my foot bar is all the way to the top. I've set up my gear bar uh, and my stopper according to my height. And I'm gonna begin with one red, and get crazy and start with the mermaid first. So you're gonna sit sideways on your machine trying your best to keep your spine vertical. So a lot of people kind of scoop back here because this is uncomfortable. Try to sit upright and if you need something under the hips, grab it, okay? I'm gonna do it on the other side because weird on my knee. Um, so listen to your body, okay? One shin against the shoulder blocks. We've got one hand on the foot bar. We're gonna just press out nice and easy as we do this lovely lateral flexion. Make sure as you're here, you're not shrugging that shoulder. So create that space. Once you're here, this hip is trying to be super heavy. And then we rotate, and let's try to place both hands on the bar. Separate the hands. Now, my first hand pushing, the second hand is giving a slight amount of pull for resistance. You should feel that open the upper back. And your back is still rounded. Try to be heavy in both the hips. Feels magical. And we untwist and go back the way we started. Foot bar arm travels up and towards our tower again, being mindful about this side shoulder. A little bit of a rotation down. Oh, feels so good. Let's do it again. Lift up, breath in. And we exhale as we flip downward. Now it's like we're holding on to a big beach ball here in our chest. So I see a lot of people come down nice and low. Yeah, I mean, it feels okay down there, but really the intent of this exercise is to open up the scapula. So we wanna be pressing with the upper back so that our shoulder blades widen and our hip is heavy. So we have this flexion and a rotation combination here at the beginning. Untwist, out we go, and up and over. This little bit of a rotation downward feels nice to get that low back on the opposite side. Okay, two is beautiful. I am going to use a little platform extender for my opposite side. This is what I was explaining before. So we just get <clears throat> a little bit of room here for our foot to go. Okay, so here we go. Backwards, one shin parallel with the shoulder blocks there. Okay, and try to keep both hips down, back is tall. We lift up, I'm mindful of this space here, and we rotate, okay? So I'm pushing and I'm pulling gently. Oh, back <laughs> just turned into a zipper. Oh, it felt so good. Untwist, float up and out, lift, and then a slight rotation down. 
second time because it's amazing up and over and a rotation so try to resist against really getting low and flat here again we're creating that roundness through the upper thoracic spine so that we have that opening it uh, in all the discs right we want to separate the vertebrae and then we untwist float up and out just the way you went in and our foot bar arm is up this is really easy to shrug here so just keep relaxing that space and we turn all right up and out staying with some of this restorative stretching at the beginning we're going to move right into our thigh stretch so we've got a knee down our standing foot's up by the wheel and first we're bending the standing leg to really lower down and open this hip flexor that feels good and then once you're ready you can press out more towards a splits like feel where your standing leg is straight now sometimes I'll let people come down here really because the focus is just on those thighs but if you're okay with it place the hands here shoulders down and extend the spine as well you can just bend in and up this one goes first one the outside leg goes down two and then in and in come around to the other side going to move our little platform and we've got the same thing here so the kneeling leg goes first opening the hip flexor you're trying to get that thigh down pretty low and then we reach if you're not feeling an equal stretch meaning hamstring and hip flexor then try to square up your pelvis a bit more toward the foot bar slide in and up again down one and two hmm relax the shoulders take a deep breath relax the muscles in your face and then we are in and up all right so we're gonna actually start things out I told you we're doing things a little bit out of order today so hang on we're gonna get our box out <clears throat> We're gonna maintain the one red spring for swan, laying on your stomach. So chest right at the front edge of the box. If you know that you like a lot of extension, you're welcome to travel a bit more forward. Hands at the corners. My feet are the width of the machine in a lateral turnout. We push the arms to straight, maintaining the length of the arms. We float up. Now, I'm just gazing on the floor five or six feet in front of me. I'm definitely not looking up like I'll pinch you that is ouch so right down here and then we lower and we return let's do that guy again so we press out it's an inhale to float up gliding the shoulder blades down the back exhale and then inhale bend I'm gonna do two more so I'm gonna scooch a smidge forward create a little bit more length in my upper back so we go out first float up now, wherever you come into, you should be able to maintain it without eating the ears. So keep the shoulders down. And if you cannot keep the shoulders out of the ears, scoot back on the box and or don't come in as close. Lift. And then we lower down and then bend in moving the legs together so now we're in a straight line I'm gonna leave the one red spring one hand salutes on the forehead and I'm gonna push out and in two three we're trying to get eight here notice that my elbow is aiming backward it's not wide it's sort of split between narrow next to the box and outside like a push-up two more and then final time here coming in moment of truth here we do the oppos opposite side and see if it's the same so when you push so in this case I'm using my left arm so the primary muscles working are going to be in my left shoulder and then on the right side of my lower back we kind of have this diagonal of muscles across our back to keep us alignment six two more feet are still together if possible and eight okay we're going to go ahead and come right down off the box 
quick sec, reach down towards your feet. So we give our low back, well, all of our back, a little bit of flexion, okay? So I'm gonna just turn the box sideways. Actually, I'm gonna cover him, because I'm going here in a moment. But for now, no springs at all. Step inside the well carefully, and we're gonna have one knee down. So if you are off kilter here, place either something under the standing foot or under this knee so that your hips are somewhat level. Okay, hands wherever you want them. I'm just gonna let the legs open as far as I can pull them back in. So kind of test the waters here. I wouldn't go for full side split on the first one. We are warming up, it's early. Out, and I'm only gonna do six. So this one is number three. When you're doing these, imagine that both legs are moving and both have to work evenly to pull back together. I think that's four, five, I don't know. We might get a bonus one here. I think that's five. One more time. So use your core, pull the legs. That's it. Turn around. All right, upright, hands on waist. Here we go, stretch. Now, if we were robots, we wouldn't have to do both sides because we'd be perfectly even on our right and our left. But because we're not, we're gonna do this little bit of subtle weight shifts right and left, depending on your body. We have to do both sides so it's all even. And I've lost count again <laughs> because we're Pilates instructors and we can't count. So I think that might be six. Hopefully it was. All right. And then I'm going to come off. And I'm adding two red springs. I've already placed my box, short box, so I'm covering the shoulder blocks. Let's go down with our foot bars. Okay, adjust your safety strap so that it's appropriate for your height. And then have a seat. Now, I like my knees a little bent so that the back of the shins is always in contact here. It keeps it out of the hip flexors as well. So sitting up tall. Now, if you like your feet together or apart, doesn't matter, okay? But keep that little softness. You've got a little bit of space behind your bottom. Okay, hand over hand. Take a breath in with a straight back. And then exhale. We lead from our belly button. You're scooping and we're rolling back while we're still in a bit of a flexion. And then we overdo it to the legs and we're up again. Again, scoop. So think leading with the low back, tail tucks under. We're in a rounded back. And then we go over you can stay here. I'm going to go back. So you can stay what we just did, or you can go for more extension, making sure that you've got that space behind you so that your low back meets the back of the box. Maybe you can get your hands down to the floor. Hands come first. Head, neck, shoulders. We overdo it. And then we're tall. One more of your choice. Curve, again, leading from the lower back. Make sure the low back lays down on the back edge of the box, and then the arms go. Maybe this time, you're gonna grab the rails for some traction. Breathe in, hands are first, head, neck, shoulders, knees are bent. And then I'm up. Okay, I'm still here. So arms out wide to sides, we're not doing anything fancy, we're just rotating, so maintaining a long, tall spine. We go right once, twice, three times, middle. Left, 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 center. So as we're turning, I'm sitting taller and taller and taller. And one, two, three, inhale, middle, exhale, one, two, three, Center, last, left, two, three, and center. All right, uh, let's come off here. No tree. You're welcome. <laughs> so we're going to get rid of the box. 
And now is a, an opportunity for us to use the tower. So I'm going to just relocate the roll down bar to the back side of the frame. Let's free up one of the eye hooks in the front so we can move the blue spring in the front and connect it to the push through bar, which is the black bar. Now, uh, I'm going to change my springs here to a single red at the beginning, okay? And here's a little go at some balance. Please stand up. Now, if you do not have a tower, you can certainly just practice this uh, on the ground. So this is kind of like a Romanian deadlift, like a one-legged Romanian deadlift if you're a gym goer. So we're just gonna bring the bar down. Easy to lose our neck and shoulders here. So drawing the shoulders down away from the ears, try to lengthen your back so we're not here, but rather a more of a table position. The red springs keeping the carriage somewhat grounded. So not as easy to move it, which is a safety method, okay? So shoulders down, we're gonna bring one leg. So I'm starting with my right, and I'm gonna just lift it up to roughly the height of my body, keeping your um, hips pointing down. So we're gonna just start by tapping and lifting. And two. So if your hip bones were headlights, they would need to shine on the floor. Keep your hips pointed down at the ground. Seven and eight. Now we're gonna take our right leg over to the side, lift tap, lift. Try to keep the shoulders woo, <laughs> down and your arms straight. Six, seven, and eight. Stand up. Quick break. It's a lot harder than it seems, right? So go ahead and find that length, shoulders down. So what I mean by the headlights is that when my leg goes up, my hips are parallel rather than this way, okay? So square up your hips, tap, lift, and two. Well, I'm really glad I started on the other side because this is my stronger side. And five, six, one more time. Now we bring that leg so that he's just in line with the hip, but wide, side, tap, side, four, five, six, seven, and eight, perfect, knees bend. And then I just come down on that rail and down. I'm gonna use this guy again. Blue only. So now, uh, you know, if you don't have a vertical frame, you could put the platform extender at the end and do side splits, okay? This one's kind of weird uh, to try to emulate without this. So just do side splits. Otherwise, we have a knee here and my leg that is on the frame, notice that my knee is pointing out wide. Easy to let the knee cave in, but I'm trying to work even at my start position. This inner thigh is working and the outer glute is working. All right, so upright posture, this kneeling leg pulls and releases. Now I want you to notice this leg, it's not moving. So a lot about Pilates is the focus on the non-moving part. This is a perfect example. Five, waist shrink wraps in, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so believe it or not, this leg is working a lot to not move. So this arm now pushes down, I haven't moved the carriage. Notice how much space he's got here. And we just do that easy mermaid like so. And then we come back up. Okay, now we try to add it together. So we pull, hold, push, Ooh, add that lateral bend. Arm is up, out, arm, leg. In, down, over, top arm releases, bar, and leg. Three more, leg, arm, bend, up, up, release, in, down. Now keep your shoulders and your hips 
facing directly forward. If it's not hurting, <laughs> it's wrong. Okay, I've been doing this for years and that is still painful. Okay, turn around. So making sure that this knee doesn't point ahead, it's gonna point at my frame. Shoulders, ribs, and hips straight ahead. This leg pulls under and return. They teach it to us like a soccer pass. So if your instep of your foot is just sweeping to the side. Five, six, seven, and eight. Now no legs. Press down, sideways, up and up. Okay, I think we did six on the first side. Leg, bar, bend, release, release the bar, release the leg. Watch out for this lunging, okay? Leg, bar, side, top, bar, Leg, again, leg, add that mermaid bend, hold the inner thigh, and release. Leg is first, bar, arm, top arm, bar, and release. My inner thighs are really talking, hopefully yours are too. Again, last, pull, push, bend, up up and release. Okay, you should be a lot of stuff happening, inner thighs and outer glutes here on that one. Okay, so we're gonna stay with this bar and I'm going to add the platform extender. Now I'm gonna just drop the ropes off here and my bar, or I'm sorry, my bar, my platform extender is I'm gonna say three inches away from the vertical frame. And I'm gonna just add a white spring. I'm not going for super heavy here. I'm going for awareness. We're gonna hit the same muscle group. Carefully step inside the well and just have a seat on the platform extender. All right, now my feet are gonna be in a lateral turnout. So I'm reaching forward here just enough to be able to grab the shoulder blocks with my toes. Now, first thing, my legs are gonna be somewhat straight. There's a softness in the knees to hold on to it because I've already got resistance. So the first thing is no legs, straight back, pull down. Now, this is quite light. I could do two million, okay? So could you. It's not about a lat pull down in terms of building that strength in the lats but more about the awareness. As you pull down, notice how the shoulder blades glide down your back. And as the bar is all the way to your chest, right here where your lats grab the bottom edge of your rib, notice how that tucks in at your waist and then release. So let's do one arm because it's so light. Pull and release. Let's get three more. Exhale, pull and return. Exhale, pull, and one more. We're gonna hold the elbow in. Now add the legs and release. Add the legs. So I'm keeping my heels together. My uh, toes are pointed out, so my whole leg from the hip is in the lateral rotation. And my back is staying upright. Now I have a little bit of assistance staying vertical because I've got this elbow bent in which helps that muscle group. One more time. Legs are out, arm is up. Other hand, pull. Again, the awareness. Notice your posture. You wanna be seated tall. Connect your core muscles so your waistline shrink wraps all four sides. No, not, uh, no shrugging and tension in the neck. We're gonna hold the, belt, uh, the bent elbow, pull, and pull. So by keeping my heels connected, I've got this awareness happening in my inner thighs. 
your inner thighs are part of your core powerhouse group. So it actually helps connect the deep abdominal muscles. And one more. Good. And now we'll get serious, okay? So keep it upright. We're going to pull it all in together. In and out. And in and out. So by keeping that lateral rotation, I'm working right here in the glute meds. Six, seven, and again, eight. Adding a little bit of flexion. So I've got some room behind me here. So as I row, I'm rolling back. And then I'm up. If you're hitting the frame with your body or head, scooch forward a little bit. Exhale, we tuck, roll, and pull. Last one, right here. Now pull, and out, and pull. So we are strengthening the muscles in the ankle by holding that strong dorsiflexion too. Obviously you can change your springs. Seven, and eight, and then we come all the way back up. Changing it a little bit. My headrest is up. I gotta get out of here just for a second. I'm gonna get rid of the white spring. If you're standing, the white spring is doable, but this bent knee version, not so much for me. So I'm gonna now place my heel right at the crease of the headrest. My leg is in parallel now, and I'm just gonna do a hamstring curl and hamstring. So I'm not really using this bar other than to just be aware of where my shoulders are. Five and six, seven. I'm gonna hold it in on number eight here and then little pulses. Three, four, four, three, two. And go ahead and release it out. Switching feet. Whoopsie. Slippery. In and out. In. Still maintaining a neutral spine. Abs are in. And it's, again, not crazy heavy. If I were going to just be doing hamstring curls, I could do more. But it's not always about more. With Pilates, it's often about the non-moving body parts. So I want you to really focus on what muscles are stabilizing the rest of you right now. I've lost count, 100%. I think this is eight right there. Good. We'll go with it. You know, there's memes about how Pilates instructors can't count. Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> all right, come all the way out. Done with this guy. Gonna let go of that for a moment. I'm getting rid of this platform extender. I'm staying light. So the blue spring is a go. Now under here, I've got my mat converter. I'm gonna move it out of my way so I can stand in here without being all the way against the back. All right, these are reverse elephants. Now, if I, when I teach people how to do this on the machine, a lot of times you get creative. So here's how you do this. If you were bent over towards your toes and you were going to stand back up, how would you do it? You'd have a little softness to your knees and you'd roll up, right? Really straightforward. Don't get creative. Same thing here. So we've got our hands on the top of the shoulder blocks. Our knees are a little bit soft, hip distance apart at the feet. And I'm going to roll as if I'm trying to stand. And then I release back out. So I am tucking the tail and beginning to flex the spine as I attempt to stand, which drags the machine in towards my lower body. Curve the tail, pull, and then inhale to return. Exhale, curve, and return. Let's get one more. Tuck, and then return. Right hand stays left on top. Same exact thing here. So we're curving. It's like my hands and my hips are magnets. 
and then I release. Target muscles, lower belly, one, obliques, two, triceps, three, lats, four. Okay, there's a bunch of other stuff going on in there. Those are the big ones. I want you to notice them particularly in that order. If you're feeling it more in your neck than anywhere else, that means the springs are too heavy. So reduce your spring to maybe a white. One more. I could do these all day. They feel good. I mean, I'd be tired, but I love how that feels. Now, as we switch to the opposite side, this is your mental note. What feels different, if anything? We are trying to promote restoration and alignment with Pilates. It's an attempt to rebalance the whole body at each and every joint. So when we do unilateral things like this, it's really important to notice how your body is the same and how it's different on right and left. Two more. Tuck and release. Tuck and release. Good. All right, I'm gonna just go ahead and climb out of here. Now, I wouldn't want anybody to feel shortchanged because everybody likes to put their feet in straps for Pilates, so I will give that to you now. One red, one blue. Foot bars up makes it easier to get into the straps, so go ahead and do that, and then we will lie down. Straps on your feet. Out we go. All right, so I like to lay my arms palm up. It really opens up the front of my chest. Breathe in and breathe out. So when we're laying on our backs here with feet in straps, it's a good time to just take note of a few things that are not moving. How's your neck, your chest, and your shoulders? That's area one. How tense is it or is it relaxed? Oh, how are your ribs? Are they flat or are they arching? Let's turn our toes apart and continue. What's going on with your lower back? Is it able to stay connected to the reformer or is it lifting up? Is your butt able to stay down or is it lifting up? Okay, these are some of the things you want to just notice. Rotate the knees and toes in, same. Three hamstrings mean we need to rotate our legs in three directions. I love this for the apparent hamstring stretching, but also because it's a passive low back stretch and it's a great hip mobilizer. Heels in, toes apart, bend and stretch in and out. Now, as I'm bending in, my ankles are flexing, and as I push, they point. So three points of flexion, three points extension, ankle, knee, hip, hip, knee, ankle. Now, can you do this with your feet separated an inch? Why do we do that? It's a little fluidity test. Is the right firing the same as your left, or do they rely on each other, and it feels more seamless when they're connected? We're going to move right into stag. One leg wide, connect. One leg wide and connect. So this is another excellent example of focusing on what's not moving. So once you get the choreography here with the legs, again, just think about what's happening in your whole trunk from your head to your tail. Are your waist the same length on right and left? Are your uh, shoulders relaxed, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So just do your little checklist of what's happening in your body. Okay, leg circles. We go around as big as you can without letting the butt lift when my legs are up and without letting the ropes touch the body on the down, reversing up and down. 
So somewhat gentle workout today, but if you are active like I am, Pilates is really, it can be a restorative part. It's like an active recovery day. So depending on what you need, um, taking it slow actually might be the perfect thing. We don't always need to beat ourselves up and try to get into a sweaty mess. Okay, so just enjoy the realignment. Now pausing here, make sure the headrest is flat and we're gonna move into our short spine. So rolling up to the upper back, that was a little fast, bend the knees and sequencing down and press. Lift up as slow as you're able, really trying to put the hips down here and out. So my, uh, level one would be here and then up and over, right? Perfectly okay. Level two, squeeze, and we lift all the way up. Soften the chest here, softening the knees, leading our hips down. And then oh, I have turned Siri off at least eight times. She likes to come back on. Bend, down, 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 oh. and out. So happy baby here, opening the legs, a little side to side action. And we're gonna keep the straps. So I still have two red springs on here. <clears throat> Tabletop the legs, we're gonna bring the arms down and up. Down and up, just three. Three here, then out to a V. Three, two, one, three to the side, one, two, three triceps, one, two, three big arm circles. It doesn't matter which way you choose. Watch that your low back doesn't lift. Same three in long legs. So again, most important is that your low back doesn't arch. V, one, two, three to the side, letter T, and watch that lowest rib nice and heavy, two, three triceps, one, two, three big circles, one, two, three, and then come in. Just drop your straps back, let the knees go right and left. All right, go ahead and come on up. So the last thing we're gonna do today is semicircle. Okay, oldie but goodie. We're gonna take the blue spring off and I need two reds, the two wide reds specifically. Okay, we're gonna drop our foot bar down. Now I'm about 5'5", five five, so I can go on this higher one, it's about three notches from the bottom. If you are taller, let's take that lower. The hardest part of semicircle is simply just getting in, so just do your best, it's kinda like Simon says. So lay down on your backs, really close to the foot bar. Okay, so we wanna create space here because this arm is gonna be straight against the shoulder blocks. So the heel of the hands in towards each other, and I'm gonna push down until my arms are straight. Once they're straight, then I'm gonna reposition my feet. So my heels are together, my toes are apart, and I'm on the ball of my foot. From here, push to straight, then we drop our backs down into extension. Keep it extending. Re uh, close the machine. Out we go, breath in. Exhale, move the spine. Inhale, move the machine. 
exhale, lift the spine. Again, long legs, extension. Stay low, tuck it up. Reverse, exhale, move the spine. Inhale, out. Exhale, we lift. Inhale, move the machine. Exhale on the back. Inhale on the legs. Exhale on the back. Inhale, one more. Down, out, lift, and in. Okay, I've got a tank top, probably not very graceful. If you've got a long sleeve, you can slide a little better. All the way back in. A ah, little side to side action. Take a breath and then come on up. And that is it for today. So not horrible, right? But just a little bit of challenge uh, adding to that realignment and restoration today for this active recovery workout. So thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.